So here's a wine from the same producer, but uh, actually with the Evesham Wood label, also 2008, and this is just their basic Pinot Noir, like their, their, their basic Lamet Valley. Wines. So it goes to Lamet Valley, Eola Hills. They used to produce a Seven Springs uh, single vineyard. They stopped because Seven Springs got sold to uh, Evening Land. A good rinse for you. Oh, damn. Um, but they also make, uh, there's, there's the Laput Sec, which is his own single vineyard. It's a non-irrigated, completely all-natural vineyard. And then the Cuvée J, which is like the best of Yeah, and they so, make another one called Le Gris Blue. Oh, yeah. I don't know if they do that every year or exactly. No, they do. Well, okay. It's okay. Like, for like, like four vintages, I think, they've made since 04. Yeah. So, but uh, I was really impressed with it last time, last time I was there to visit. So. Hebsham would make some nice wine. That's the point of the story. Nice people to visit too. Winemakers trained in Germany. So uh, I've got some respect for somebody who's got some respect for a reason. Alright, so so this bottle in particular uh, was the 2005 vintage of this was the first wine that actually set me off on drinking quality wine. Um, I drank a whole bunch of like crap like Yellowtail, Charles Shaw, and then 2005 vintage of this, a friend of mine opened it for me, poured it for me in a burgundy glass, and it was just, it was the first time I ever had like that moment with wine that really sets you on the path to drinking quality wine. So I have a little special place in my heart for this bottle in particular. So we'll see how this one does. I'm kind of excited for this one. I need to finish this though. Thanks, Dave. Wines for drinking, you can handle it. Son of a bitch. And this is the start of my weekend. So, uh, as you can see, we're shooting here in the cellar again yeah. tonight. Hopefully the fan noise isn't quite as loud as the last time we shot. Right. It wasn't bad last time. Yeah. 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 Not too bad. But, uh, yeah, we're here to enjoy the wine tonight. Absolutely. A little better fun. color. Still kind of light, but, but uh, definitely, definitely dark. And definitely a touch darker. Yeah. The other stuff was really light. Heavier weight on the nose right off the bat. I mean, you can see it's, it's richer fruit. I mean, yeah. A little bit more going on. Much more enjoyable. I'm getting a little bit of plums along with the blackberries. Yeah. Plums and floral, maybe? You get anything floral? No, not so much. All right. I, 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 like the plums hit um, a little bit of like this is some blackberry fruit or something. Something's kind of typical, like maybe some sour cherry. Nice mouthfeel. I, I think across the palate, it's, it's it's you know fairly delicate and even, but nice. I mean, still has some good acidity and good oh, tannins. Yeah. I mean, nice acidity down the sides of my palate. Yeah, off from the finish there. A little bit of a sing cool. there. That's that's very nice. It's balanced. It's not uh, doesn't take away from the experience at all. Yeah. A little light on the front, but yeah, just some nice some nice gentle tannins coming in on the mid palate. It's more like sour. Sour fruit, like sour raspberry, sure. Uh, brighter red berries, maybe even a little cherry there, but yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, and I, you know, I lean towards blackberry. My, my palate tends to pick out blackberry more often, but I'm totally getting a little, a little more of that sour note. So for that cut, um, at one o'clock, the uh, alarm system goes off just at random and tells you to get the fuck out, which is kind of yeah. weird. But it's a 24-hour place, so here we are. Anyway, back into the line. How are you feeling about this? Feeling pretty good overall. I, I think it's, uh, yeah, like, like I said, I, I really appreciate it. In, in these cheaper bottles, if there isn't anything offensive that jumps out at me, I'm happy right away. I think a lot of winemakers are lazy oh. and make cheap bottles out of stuff that, that in my opinion, either should be dumped out of the drain or diluted all out with a lot of bigger batches to kind of get rid of excessive alcohol, bitter tannins. Could you say that that's what the Bruno is? I. I, I wouldn't throw that away. I think this is a reasonable decision to bottle it. I think at the price point, it's not fair, but there's nothing offensive about it. I imagine most of you have had bottles where you're like, this is disgusting, I don't want to drink anymore. I'm going to hit the beer. I'm going to quit drinking for the rest of the night because this wine is so bad. I, I, I had some the other day where I, I was actually not even caring too much about the quality. It's like, I want to get a little bit of a buzz. And this is still such a bad rosé. I'm not going to finish the glass. I'm going to move on. To, I'm going to move really on to something bad. else. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and and this isn't even remotely in that category. Not even remotely. It's not not even for me either. I mean, I would still kill the bottle. So. Now, when it comes down to the fact that these are comparable price points, that's another story. 
fifteen dollars. Head and shoulders. Head and shoulders above. Uh, head and shoulders above. But my, my guess would be being the same producer, I bet that's that? the intent too. Uh, fourteen, give or take. So okay. so. Comfortable. A little bit like like fifteen eighty, so really sixteen dollars. Okay, so two dollars cheaper there. A little cheaper, and it, you know, and I, again, if you shop around, I bet you'll see bigger discounts on this too. Um, but uh, this is easily worth a couple of bucks, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. So why do you, how you feel about this? Eighty-seven. And happy with it, and, and uh, yeah, eighty-seven. Happy with it at the price. Sure, I'd buy it again. I'm going to go 87 plus. Uh, I think this will improve with age. It's structured tightly yeah. right now. Uh, it's, I mean, it's got good fruit, right? But I mean, it's got tannins. It's got some strong acid. I think you could sit on this for three years and it would be soft and very good. Have some really interesting fruit. So, hmm. yeah, I'm going to go 87 plus. Not that I have a lot of experience with it personally. I don't think I'd age it much longer than that. Like that'd be the yeah, oh, yeah. that'd be three the outside five years. Because it is on the lighter side. There's not a lot of like fruit that I think is waiting to come out or anything like that. But uh, yeah, I mean the acidity alone, I think it, it, it can. Make I think it'll soften and get, and get pretty neat. So yeah, there's our show. So uh, what's what's the question of the day? Uh, so Chaz was just talking about how this is the wine that got him turned on to wine. Uh, we'd really love to hear some comments from you folks. What was the wine? that made you think about wine. I mean, I'm assuming if you're watching this, you care a little bit about it. You're not yeah. just here because your friends, well, you might be here because you're friends of ours, <laughs> but uh, you drank some wine, you've enjoyed yeah. it, you probably like thinking about it a little bit. There was probably one wine that made you think, hey, wine's worth exploring a little more. I want to do a little more of this. What was that wine? Yeah, perfect, great question. So, All thanks right. for watching. Thanks for watching, guys.